In this sponsored tutorial, we're going to check out Stratum, which is a free and premium extension for Elementor, adding 20 excellent widgets to your Elementor site. The free version is super capable. The pro version adds a bunch of features, but the free version has all the widgets and pretty much all the settings that you need to make awesome elements on your Elementor site using Stratum. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. This is a Stratum widget right here. It's made by Motopress. They have a ton of plugins and themes that they create and support, and they're a great company to work with. And this Stratum theme, the reason I'm pointing it out is because there's a free version and a paid version, but the free version is almost full power. It has all the widgets that the paid version has, just that the paid version has a few extra customization settings. And you'll see where they are throughout this tutorial. So I'm going to go back to my WordPress dashboard and go to plugins and then add new and search for Stratum. And this is the one I want right here. And I already have it installed and activated as you can see. And it has added a Stratum menu option on the left here. If I click on that, we see a change log, stuff that's been changed or added or fixed. Under settings, we can turn individual widgets on or off, which helps with site load times and even backend load time. So you're not loading the widget in the Elementor Builder and just makes things go faster. So these are all the widgets here. There's 20 of them. And under style, we can change the default colors for those widgets. You'll see where those apply in our examples in a minute. And under API, you can add Instagram access token and a Google Maps API key for those two specific widgets. I'm not gonna do that in this case. I'm gonna look at the ones on their website. They have the advanced Google Map widget examples here and Instagram widget examples here. So look at those on their site. All the other widgets we're gonna look at on this site right here. And if you need help getting these API keys and access tokens, just click on the links and it'll walk you through how to set them up. So let's go to the page where I have all these created already and we'll talk about how they appear and how you can customize them. So before I scroll down through the widgets, I just want to show you the widget section on the left here. We have a section called Stratum Widgets, and that's where they are all located. And we go through all of them pretty much in order from uh, top to bottom, left to right. You get what I mean, all the way to the last one, and we're going to see how they all work. So if I scroll down, right here we have the first widget, the Timeline Widget. You'll see as I scroll, the timeline items are appearing. The blue line in the center is scrolling down with me as we go. It lights up the icons when we get there. I have not seen another Elementor plugin for free that offers this timeline functionality, and I like it a lot. So if I click into here, we can add items really easily or remove them. In any item, you can change the, the title, the meta information, the date in this case. It could be whatever you want, really, but the date makes a lot of sense for a timeline. Description here, all these can be connected to dynamic tags if you want to. And you can change the icon. You can also just have text in that spot. I prefer the icon. You can have them all be different icons, have them all be the same icon, whatever you want to do. You can easily add more items, take them away. Under layout, we can change the alignment. So if we choose this for horizontal, we see all the dates are on the right, all the text is on the left. Choose the right option to switch that. I like the center where they alternate. Vertical alignment puts the dates on the top if you choose the top one, puts them on the bottom if you choose the bottom one. I like them in the middle. It also moves the icons to the top and the bottom as well. And you can change spacing for horizontal and vertical space as well. And then under style, we have all the familiar options for customizing pretty much anything that you see. And under styling is where we're first going to see, for the first time, a pro option. Here, for the point, which is the circle, we have a background color that is a pro option. So wherever it says pro here, that's where you need the pro plugin. So if you can do without wherever it says pro, you don't need the pro. But if you need to upgrade to the pro, then you can get those extra customization settings. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. Then we'll scroll down to our next widget which is the pricing menu. It is this one right here. We skipped Instagram and Google Maps. We'll get back to those in the end on their website, like I said earlier. So the pricing menu is this one right here, and you can use it to create a menu. 
You could turn off the line separators if you want. I find them very handy. So you, if they're, especially if the menu items are close together, so you can see which item is which price. If we click in any one of these items, we can change pretty much anything about them and turn this into a great looking menu. You can even add images if you want. On this site, we just have mountains or maybe a, a logo as an image. And we can change the alignment so you have the image on the left or choose right to move it to the right. And you can see when we have it on the left, there's this big gap. We can fix that by going into style and then under image width, just move this down to whatever amount that you want to make it make sense. You can add image for every menu item if you want, and you can have a full-fledged, great-looking menu right there. This next widget is the banner widget. This is a banner image with text overlay if you want it. It's also a clickable link if you add a link right here. You can customize all the content right here in this tab and the styling content over here. A lot of customization options. As you can see, the pro options, there aren't that many of them. The free version is pretty much all the options you need. Just a select few have the pro label and are for pro only. This next widget is an image hotspot. I like it a lot. Hover over these icons and it says stuff. And what it says is what we set up on the left here. So we have our background image, which is the image in the background. And then we can add our hotspots. Just add a new one right here, move it to wherever we want. We can change the text by clicking on tooltip and turning tooltip on and then putting in a title and content right here, and there it appears. And you can move these around anytime in the back end, then you click on save, and it'll be saved and on the front end of the website, which is pretty awesome. And there's lots of customization settings for those as well, and lots of style settings. And again, not a pro restriction in sight. Let me see, oh wait, there's one right here. Open by default. So when the page loads, you can have certain tooltips open when the page loads if you have pro. That's the only pro customization option for this widget. Like I said, most of the widgets, most of the customizations are in the free version, which is pretty cool. Here we have a countdown, pretty standard fare countdown. If you have the pro version, you can have it do something after it expires. If you're counting down to say a sale or the end of a sale or, or something, you can't do the redirect in the free version, but you might not need to. Then we have all the style options, customize anything you want to do with this countdown widget. Here we have an image accordion. I don't see these very often. If I hover over the images, it shows text and a title. I think they look pretty cool, these image accordions. I've customized this one a little bit already. When you go into add the item, you add the image, and I turned on the content. It's not on by default. By default, it looks something like this. So you turn on the content, and you can add a title and description. You can even add an icon if you want. A lot of customization options. And you can change the offset of the title as well. So you notice these ones, title or the text is at the very top. And this one's moved down a bit. You can change it using this slider right here. And a button is part of the pro version. And then under style, we can change the images with image effects if you want here. And then customization options for the content as well. Next up, we have a counter. Instead of a countdown, it's a counter and it counts up. So let me just change this number to 100 and we see it counting up. Pretty standard fare for a counter. All the customization options you'd expect as well. Here we have a pricing table. This pricing table is default. This is how it looks when I just drop it onto the page. Not super exciting, but allows you the flexibility to create whatever you want. You can set all the text in the content widget here. You can add more items. This would be like the feature list that you have right here under these list items. And then under style, you can change all the colors for pretty much everything you need. And then what you can do is set your section to have three columns this is part of this section this widget is in, in a section that includes all the stuff above so I can't do it in this case but you can just add multiple columns to your section and then have your pricing plan one in each of those columns pretty straightforward clean nice customizable pricing widget then we have the advanced accordion works just like you'd expect an accordion to you click on things and they open you can change it to be a toggle if you want so you can have them all open at the same time, whereas the accordion only has one open at the same time. You can also make it not collapsible, so change this to no, and the one that's currently open can't be collapsed. Whereas when you have a collapsible, you can have them all totally closed if you want. In the individual items, we can add text, we can add icons, 
We can change the content type if we have the pro version. I'm not sure what other content, content types it could be, but it must be something else. Probably image and text options. Under style, we can customize all of our styling. This is the advanced tabs, similar to the accordion, but instead of accordions, we have tabs. So you click on a tab and it changes tabs. We can customize them in here, change the icons, change the text, change the title, change the interactivity. You can make it on hover instead of on click. You can do that for a lot of these widgets, change the functionality to be on hover or the interactivity to be on hover instead of on click. Here we have a flip box, pretty standard flip box, also pretty handy, pretty neat effects. Here we have a horizontal timeline, similar to the one that we have above, it's just horizontal. And what I found is this one, the line does not follow you. So as you scroll over, there's no line following you. And there's a setting to make these icons highlighted. So if I go into item number one and under active, changes to no, we see it takes the highlighting away. And under item two, we have show image activated and we have an image in there. And we can add the date, title, description, icon, change the icon, and styling allows us to style all the stuff that you can see in here. We have a testimonial carousel. Pretty straightforward. Under the items, we can add content, picture, subtitle, things like that. Under carousel settings, we can set how many columns we want. We could have it in rows as well, so we could have them above each other, which you don't see too often for testimonial carousels, but you can do that here. You can change the slider direction, so it could be up and down if you want, instead of side to side. And under style, you have the ability to style your testimonials and all the widgets, all the text and stuff involved. Here we have a masonry gallery. See the images popping in. All you do to make this function, you click on the gallery here, you pick the images that you want to add, and they show up in the gallery. You can rearrange them if you want, just drag and drop. Insert gallery, and then we can choose under style, things like animating on the scroll. You can just have them there and not be animated. They're not flashing in now. You turn on animate, and they appear as you scroll down. And whenever you change, like this gap right here is not gonna be on the front end, just something in the back end here, whenever you change the type, sometimes they are misaligned. But I find when you go to the front end, the aligning is always proper. So you change the effect, you can change a whole lot of settings related to your masonry grid to make it appear just how you want it to. And that's the masonry grid. Here we have advanced posts. This allows you to show recent posts on your website. Not just recent posts, actually. You can change the query settings right here so you can show any posts you want. So you could have posts specific to a specific category, add that to an Elementor template. That is a page template, four pages in that category, and you keep everything focused on that category. That's a great use case for query settings. Under general, we can choose all our options for our posts. We can have a grid, we can have a list, we can have a carousel. I like the carousel quite a bit for posts. And there's all the options related to that under style. We can change the styling for all these components of the carousel, which is pretty much all the components. And again, sometimes you're gonna see a pro option, although I can't see any here. You know what I'm talking about. They're pretty hard to find. The free plugin does pretty much everything. There's just a handful of options that are in the pro version. And then the advanced slider is similar to the advanced or the advanced posts. It's just a slider with images. And we can add the items here on the left and then we can slide through them. We can change the layout. By default, it shows just one column and scrolls to one slide like this. So you go scrolling through each one. If you change it to two columns, you're probably gonna to wanna to change the slides to scroll because if I now press forward, it just slides one over. Maybe that's what you want, but maybe not. Maybe you want to go right to this slide. So you skip the first two because you're basically scrolling the whole page. Go to two, and it scrolls past both of these to the next two. So that's this option here. Another option I like is, where is it down here? Free move mode. This allows you to move the slider. You just click and hold with your mouse, and you can see you can move it however you want. Usually sliders, they function like this. You click and hold with your mouse and it goes to, if you drag it far enough, it goes to the next one and that's it. Whereas the free move, 
it's like scrolling through a, a PDF, I guess, a horizontal PDF. You can just scroll however far you want, stop where you want, and it doesn't snap to anywhere. This stays where you put it. And here we see some of the pro options appearing. And under style, we can customize the display and style of all these components, which is basically all the components in the advanced slider. For the advanced Google Maps, which is something we need the Google API key for, so we're showing it on their website, you can create a map like this, looks very familiar, and you can drop a pin wherever you want. You can set that up inside of the plugin. Let's see if we can add it to the page. Even if we don't customize it, we can see what it can do. So here we can choose map markers. So we can add a marker wherever we want, latitude and longitude, and we can change the map controls and we can change the map theme based on these options right here. So on the map, we can drop a marker. We can add text to that marker if we want to. These are different themes that you can see here. And these are fully functional Google Maps. So you can drag them around, move them around. And you can close that tooltip. You can click on different markers. You have as many markers as you want on the page. So that's the Google Map, the advanced Google Map widget. The Instagram widget allows you to pull in Instagram posts. These are example Instagram posts here. And here it shows six items. And if we go to the widgets here, drag and drop Instagram onto the page, we see by default it shows six items. You can change that to whatever number you want. And then you can customize some of the styling for those items on the page. So that's the Stratum plugin. If you like what you see, check it out because it's free. The pro version costs $29 or you get it as part of the MotorPress membership if you have one. As you saw, the pro options are pretty few and far between for the Stratum plugin. The ones that are pro are pretty key, I think, like the for this one, the infinite loop is something I like. Hang on, layout, infinite loop right down here is a pro item. So if I go to the right, I'm clicking right now and I can't go any farther. Whereas if it was an infinite loop, it just keep going around and around and I think that's a pretty valuable item for this widget. So the pro options are not necessary, but they add a lot of value. So if you do want some of the pro options, pretty cheap at 29 bucks, but definitely check out the free version. It might do exactly what you need. And next up is checking out these two playlists right up here. This top one is about the free version of Elementor. The bottom one's about the pro version of Elementor and all kinds of cool stuff you can do with either of those or both of those. So check out those playlists. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Altpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.